It's holy to be It's holy to worship. And the magnify the Lord tonight, amen. He will touch your life and minister into your life tonight. Amen. It's so good tonight to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm so glad that you came out to be with us in the revival tonight. And just thank God for what he's already done. Amen. For the day of what God is going to do tonight in this service. Amen. It's so good to have you. I just want you to feel at home. Just worship. The Lord magnify the Lord. Give him praise. Yeah. And glory. If you know that I'm a child of God, that he brought you out, you got something to praise him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Somebody, you know, some people will worship God because they got $100 in the bank. Some people will worship God because their car payment. I'll tell you what, when those disciples came back from casting out devils and preaching, and they was rejoicing because the devils were subject to the name. He said, you got Bible, you need to get happy about that. He said, but what you need to rejoice in is that you know what you should have done.
worthy. Sister Tammy, to feel his presence. But my Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I heard a song today. Some people that we know wrote, um, and it says, can he still save? Can he still heal? Can he still calm the storms? I say, peace be still. Can he still save a life from sin? Yes, he can. The answer to those questions are, he can. And whatever you got need of, man, isn't it good that you don't have to be in church to get saved? I thought a while ago when he said that, I said the angels are rejoicing. There's a new name.
church will soon to be gone for you. They can have it all. Because we're going to be gone. Amen. Right here. Again, I appreciate you being here tonight in the house of the Lord. And it's a privilege of mine to have the black family and sister Rita with us this week. They blessed our hearts on yesterday with the preaching of the word. Amen. In this song, and I want them to come right now and just take their liberty in the Lord. Obey me what God sing as long as you want to sing, preach as long as you want to preach, just obey the Lord. Amen. Come on, give them a hand tonight. <laughs> church tonight and the music was going and singing. Oh my, we, the church has already started. <laughs> Praise God. All right, we'll sing a song or two here. If you know them, just sing right on them with us. Thank you, Jesus. An old song that we've been singing a lot lately with <clears throat> our world that's, whew. Aren't you glad we could lean on the everlasting Lord? Yeah. Yeah. He's still on the throne. He's not lost his power. He's not gone anywhere. And we can still praise him.
it's a wonderful time to be saved. Oh, that's yeah, what we keep yeah. saying among ourselves when we hear more yes. news that's confusing, that's wow. disheartening. Would you say it's just a wonderful, oh, wonderful yeah. time yeah. to know the Lord, yeah. to be filled yeah. with the Spirit, and to know we're ready to go. Yes. And, uh, we're going to sing a new song for you tonight that we have not sung together in church. Um, I'm thankful tonight to know that even if there would be somebody here that you feel like that you're standing for the Lord alone, you're in a home or an environment, maybe on your job, somebody in college, whatever the need may be, or the case may be, that you feel like that you're standing for the Lord alone, we've got some people in the Word of God that we can look back to and say That's that right. they could stand right. for the That's Lord right. alone, then they're our example. We realize, Lord, you're all I need. I know your grace is going to see me through. The second verse says, In a world of sin and compromise, sometimes it's hard to stand for what's right. But as for me, I've made my choice. This I make my vow. And I'm going to stand and I'm going to serve And so you part from this face, I'm sure we're going to make it. But just listen to the words. He was betrayed. By his very own, a righteous man, Joseph stood alone. He was accused, his faith was tried, but he said, Lord, I've made up my mind.
feel like that those words are going to start speaking louder as we find ourselves in a circle that's smaller. And, uh, but one thing that I love about God is that the more desperate the situation, the more real he is. And I might have to a story, a testimony a brother gave uh, some time back. And uh, obviously he was going through a, a terrible time in his life. He was uh, he was under the stress of life and situations that had happened. And he was discouraged. He didn't know exactly how he was going to go forward in his life. And he, he was a truck driver. And he was driving down the road just crying and praying. He said, all of a sudden, he said, I felt a presence come in that vehicle. Right. And he said, it was so real, Brother John. He said, I feel like I could have reached over and just touched him. Oh. And about that time, another truck passed him. And he called out his, his truck name and he because he drove for Smithfield. He said, hey, Smithfield. He said, when did they start allowing teen drivers, two drivers to get in the vehicle? And he said, they don't. He said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a solo driver. He said, they don't allow teen drivers. He said, well, I've seen somebody sitting in the passenger seat of your truck. You can't tell me there wasn't nobody in there. I saw him. He said, there wasn't nobody in there. He said, he said sir, I saw him sitting in the passenger seat. So that brother, he said, the Lord allowed a sinner in. We don't know exactly, but assuming. Just a regular old Joe going past him. He he saw that physical presence as confirmation. That man wasn't alone. He may have felt like he was standing alone. He wasn't standing alone. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad that we can we can stand for the Lord no matter how hard it gets. How hard it gets. Because we have the story of the three Hebrew boys. That that children's story inspired what Sandy wrote in this this song. Go right along with what we just sang.
your heart. It's not just words you sing in time. You should rather be an old time Christian than a Amen. God bless you tonight. We trust you both thank the Lord that does seem to be a channel in the service tonight. We always like the Holy Ghost to have complete right away. We don't want to get in front of the Holy Ghost and behind the Holy Ghost, but we want to be right with him. Stay right with him and see what he will do. We trust the Lord is going to touch every soul that's walked through the doors tonight. When you leave, you're going to leave back out a different way. Oh, Hallelujah. So thank you for the testimony of the, the, the brother that said he gave his heart to the Lord today. Yes, Praise yes, God. God. Appreciate it. Another soul being won into God's kingdom. Yes, right. Another one that can go to heaven now. Yes, Amen. Right. Thank you for that testimony. God bless you. God keep you. And he will. Amen. If we want to be kept, he will keep yes. us. That's right. Amen. There's not any devils in hell that can stop us from getting to heaven if we make up our minds. Amen. In the book of Esther tonight, Esther in chapter 4, we thank Brother John. It's our first time to be able to preach with him being pastor. And he's doing a fine job. Yeah, he's got some fire down in their bones. I heard a sign with the microphone while they were singing. We've never heard him sing before, but it sounded like he was doing a pretty good job of what he was doing a while ago. And uh, we just appreciate his desire to serve the Lord. And uh, every young person that's stepping out and being what God wants them to be, it's, that's encouraging in these days. God, we have several young folks here tonight. We trust that you've made up your mind to serve the Lord and how the Lord use you exactly how he wants to. We love Sister Carmen, we love Brother Sister Nesbitt, the family, the church here. We're so happy to see Brother McKenzie and Sister McKenzie. So glad the Lord has brought them up from that terrible stuff. Oh yeah, so glad the Lord raised them up. Yeah. And they're here. Yeah. And all of you, wherever you're from, we appreciate. Didn't Sister Rita preach good yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Such a good message, such yeah. a good time yesterday, and homecoming, the meal. And you all always do so well. Just a wonderful meal. Here we are to see what the Lord will do for us today, tonight. I've come to the church and prayed for, I was here for quite a while, laid on my face before the Lord, and I felt the Holy Ghost give me an unction to preach to us tonight and I felt his help and his touch so I'm going to do my best to do what I can to deliver this message the way that the Lord has laid it on my heart. In the book of Esther in chapter 4 chapter 4 of Esther in verse 13 and verse 14 the Bible said then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou all together holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And that was a question. He says, who knoweth that thou hast come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And that's what I want to preach from tonight. For such a time as this, you are here and God is calling you. Before you're seated, would you ask the Lord to help us tonight that we can deliver this at our little we can be anointed and your ears can hear what the Spirit of God would have you hear. Father, we thank you for the Spirit of your Holy Ghost that's so miraculous and been about the Son of God and the Lord. Thank you for this revival. Thank you for the pastor, this church, the visitors. Lord, I'm here to do my best. Oh, God, I hear you Father, that we can hear what you want us to hear. Give us ears. 
when you compel them to come to you. Never is there a time for us to sit down and not do what we're supposed to do. In fact, as we see the day approaching and the Lord getting ready to come back, then there should be a fight within us. There should be a fire within us. Why we can't. 
instead of us focusing on why we can. Hallelujah. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, stay with me. Did you know that uh, this type of temptation of focusing in on insecurities is a very, very old temptation? Oh, my goodness, I'm so full tonight. Studying today, I begin to study several in the Word of God. And when I begin to look back at a man that was, well, he started out, you know, he started out by, um, it was an abusive mother that he had, but it was an abusive king. It was an abusive ruler, I should say. Right. And they were commanded that all the boy babies was going to have to be killed at birth. And so this mother decides, hey, I see my child. There's something different about my child. And so when he gets old enough and she can't hide him anymore, she builds a little ark out of, uh, she takes this little basket and she pitches it in and out. And, and she makes it to where it's going to be able to flow in the Nile River, right? And so she takes this little baby boy and she puts her baby in this ark. And she puts it in the river. Now you understand what was in the river. You understand what could have gotten her baby boy. But God had his hand on this baby boy. And so after a little while, Pharaoh's daughter comes down to the river. And she's washing there. Her maids are there. And they're having their time. And, 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 and all of a sudden, she sees something over in the, and I'm putting it in my words. She sees something over in the distance, and she goes over, and she just looks in this basket to see what's in the basket, and when she looks in, then this baby that ends up being called Moses, because he was drawn out of the water, is all of a sudden crying. <laughs> and there's something that gets a hold of this little uh, Pharaoh's daughter's heart, and all of a sudden, isn't it wonderful? Oh, isn't it wonderful? That what God says is going to survive, and what God says is going to work. You can put it in the river. Even though crocodiles and their life, nothing's going to happen to them. They're going to be fine. <laughs> and so Pharaoh's daughter comes. She has such compassion on the baby. And Miriam's just over there hiding just a little ways. And she just so happens to come up and ask Pharaoh's daughter, um, do you need some help with this baby? Yeah. Well, she says, yes, I will. And so Miriam goes and calls Moses' mother. So mother, the mother comes, and you know what happened? Moses' mother is paid to be able to hold her own. She's paid to be able to hold her own baby in her arms and be able to tell Moses all about who God is and instill in him the things he She's paid to be able to do that. Moses grows up under Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's, well, you know the story how he had to flee for his life because he started uh, thinking maybe it was time for him to take on the role that God was going to call him to do. And so he has to go to the desert for 40 years. Well, this man, Moses, he's out there, and all of a sudden, after a while, you know, remember the story. You remember how God begins to speak to him. How there's a bush that's burning, but it's not being burned up. It's on fire. Ah, hallelujah. God talked to Moses out of that burning bush. God began to talk to Moses and begin to tell him the things that he's going to do in order to lead the children of Israel from the land of bondage into the promised land. But Moses here, no matter how real or imagined, his inadequate, inadequate feelings are, because we're going to understand here, when God begins to get nitty-gritty with this man, that Moses has all these insecurities, all of a sudden it starts popping up. God begins to talk to him and tell him, he said, uh, I, I'm going to use you. And Moses begins to say, oh no, he said, I'm not eloquent. I haven't ever been eloquent in my own words. He said, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. I can't speak well. I can't talk well. I, oh, well, that one man, Baptist, y'all look him up. He's on, uh, you can see.
seen on YouTube. He's got cerebral palsy. Have you ever heard of him? And he can't talk right. He can't hear you. He'll tell you that. He says, I talk funny. I walk funny. He said, but God called me. The day they ever, he said, I never met my family. He told me I was a loser. And I never met anything. He said, but I rose up to be. And his schedule was so full, he couldn't keep up with it all, sound like. And he tells all the messages that he preached. He said, I walk funny. I talk funny. I can't preach like other people do. But I am. And then he points his finger. And he says, what's your problem? What's your problem? Uh, well, Moses says, I can't do this. Now I want you to notice something. When God began to deal with Moses and tell him what he was going to do, God was not angry in, in chapter 3 and verse 11. Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? God was not angry when he asked that question. God was not angry when he asked that question. He wasn't angry. And in verse 13, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and say unto them, the God of your fathers shall send me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? God wasn't angry with him there. God wasn't angry then. God was not angry when he said to him, uh, uh, Moses answered and said to God, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hear, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. God's not angry still yet with me. It wasn't, God really wasn't angry exactly with him even saying, I can't speak or I can't do this because God knew that any inability that Moses had, that God was able to fill him with his all sufficiency all right. and be enough. But it was, and I'm going to talk to his heart to heart. It wasn't until Moses, after all of this, he, he told the Lord, he said, I, I, and he said, oh, my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. What is he doing? Moses is trying to back out and, and push it off oh on somebody else and somebody else to do the part that God was calling him to do. He was angry with Moses for not being willing. His problem was not that he was not able but his problem was, oh. I am unwilling to do this. Yeah. He offered a string of excuses. And then at the very last, he just said, send somebody else in my place. Oh. Let somebody else do it. Oh. I'm here to talk to us tonight. We can make, make excuses after excuses after excuses after excuses, Brother John. But nothing will work for God. Oh. We've got to realize that I'm nothing but he's everything. Oh. Yeah. Say, Lord, you make me who you want me to be. Moses, it doesn't matter what excuse you give. It doesn't matter what you try to do to get out of it. You're called for such a time as this. <laughs> I'd like for everybody tonight, I, all and every, each one of us, that we can understand nobody can take your place. Nobody can take my place. There's nobody that can be in your shoes and do what God has called you to when you oh yeah, he's got a word, he's got others that can step in. But when God is calling us to fill those shoes, when God is calling us to step up to the plate, and we put it up on somebody else, and we say, Lord, use them, send them, send them. When we are got that mentality, then it angers the Lord. Oh, 
security? What is he doing? What is the enemy telling you that's holding you back from being what God wants you to be? And it doesn't have to be a preacher. It doesn't have to be a singer. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be any title of anything. All it has to be is you, wherever you are called to minister. And you say, but I'm not a preacher. I'm not a... Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are God's witnesses. He called us all to be his witnesses and to stand up and be who he wants us to be. What has he been bidding you to do? And you're saying, God, I can't. God, I can't. Aren't you glad that we had a man named Moses that stood up and said, I will go. You can use me, Lord. Hell in the world. He was able to deal with all this grumbling, grumbling people and take them into the promised land after all that they did to aggravate him. And to draw all my youth wonder didn't go insane. Had the Lord not helped him. Amen. Amen. But he kept his integrity and he was known to be the meekest man of all the earth. You say, you don't know what I'm dealing with. Hey, look at Moses. Lay your excuses aside. Lay the insecurities aside. And say, Lord, I'm going to be what you want me to be. Our insecurities, they're always before us. And then we're always guilty. I'm not careful. Others will say, but my surroundings are just not favorable. Oh. We're coming back to Esther. Go ahead. With the help of the Lord. Come on. But I'm telling you, when I've been reading about a man named Daniel, mm -hmm. I've been under such conviction. Come on. Come on. I mean that. Daniel, you talk about unfavorable conditions. Brother Aaron, he's taken captive. Him and how many others? But we do read of Daniel and the, uh, the other three. They're in a heathen country. They're in a godless society. Wicked. And when they get here, when they when they get here, then the king calls for them. And one of the first things he does is changes their name. Sister Carmen, I think you brought this out yesterday in Sunday school class. <clears throat> their names are changed. You know why their names was needed to be changed? Because their names, their Hebrew name, Daniel meant, in the Hebrew, Daniel meant God is my judge. That was such a good God is my judge. But when they change it to Belshazzar, when they give him this name, that means the name of a false god, or it means Bells, B-E-L, Bells, Prince. So they're taking out, they're going to do everything they can to take out their Hebrew right. roots and do everything possible to try to make them uh, 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 Mishael or Hananiah. Let me, let me, let me get it. Hananiah meant his name meant beloved of the Lord, but it was changed to Shadrach, meaning illuminated by sun god. Right. So his name has been changed to illuminated by sun god. Mishael, his name, Hebrew name, meant who is as God, who is as God. And his, and his name was was uh, changed to Meshach, meaning who was like Venus. That's another God. And then Azariah, the Hebrew name is the Lord is my help. And his name was changed to Abednego, meaning servant of Nego. That was another God. They changed their names from the Hebrew into something completely tearing out of them. And then inside of them, Brother Bobby, they were instructed for three years. Three years they was going to be indoctrinated right. with all this heathenistic cult right. culture and custom to try to rip out of them all. And then on top of that, even down to their diet was going to be changed. And so Daniel speaks up and he, he said, in so many words, you've changed my name, but I know who I am. You can try to indoctrinate me, but I'm still on where our roots are. I choose to stand. They said, I choose to stand. And so they said, okay, then we'll change your diet. And what that was a symbol of, Daniel realized his relationship with God in every area of his life was of importance. Eating the king's food would imply fellowship with Babylon's culture and medicinal the adherence to the 
could have been killed for asking to eat something different. The kings were so brutal. They were mean. And it could have been his life. But he took the chance. He said, all right, for such a time as this, I'm called here. And so he goes in and he says, listen, I don't want to eat the king's meat. And I don't want to eat the king's wine. Right. They said, the master of the house said, well, it couldn't be my head. We'd be killed because of him. Yeah. And Daniel said, all right, when you try, it's just 10 days. Yeah. Now, Sister Carmen, Sister, I, I've been on a few diets in my life, in my all my life. I I'll, I'll always been chunky. I, call, I like to call it chunky. <clears throat> Instead of just fat, you know, I like to say I was chunky. But anyway, I've been on some diets in my life, and if I would have ever eaten what these boys ate, what they asked to eat right here, pulse and water for 10 days, then I would have lost weight on this. How about y'all? What you want? But you know what happened to them? <laughs> when they adhered to what they knew they were supposed to eat right here, the pulse and the water, the Bible said after 10 days, they were found fairer and fatter and flesh than all the children of Israel. I mean, well, not all the children of Israel, of all of their, those that was around them. They were fairer and fatter of the children which did eat the portion of the king's feet. And so the Lord would then say, all right, that's what we're going to give you to eat. The Bible said they were 10 times better than those that was in the king. Can I tell you the man, Daniel, that was unashamed when the king dreams a dream, and he's got to be one that goes in and interprets the handwriting on the wall, and it's not a good interpretation. It is a curse. But Daniel said, I'm in an unfavorable culture. I don't like my surroundings. I don't like what's going on. But I love my God and for such a time as
convinced that an 80 year old is going to have bones that you have to be a little bit more careful with than when you're younger, you know? And have you ever thought of these little details? I'm telling you, it put me under conviction when I got to looking at a man named Daniel that everything's odds against him and everything that he's having to endure. But if I studied right, if I got it right, the King Cyrus, you remember Cyrus that would that, that come to, to the kingdom? And he was the one that 400 years before that was called by name. God named him. But I, I understand if I studied right, then it was probably the influence of Daniel that caused Cyrus to be able to allow the Jews to return back home and actually send the vessels back to the temple. All because somebody in unfavorable circumstances and odds are all against them says, but I will be what I'm supposed to. I'm not going to look for an excuse not to do what I'm supposed to do. Listen, church, for such a time as this, God is calling us. He's calling us to stand up and be what we're supposed to be. To stand up. Oh, God help us that we be a Joseph. I believe Sandy spoke of Joseph tonight. Help us to be a Joseph. Circumstances were not favorable. His brothers sold him. He's in Egypt now. Is he a young man? How old are you, Brother Aaron? I believe Joseph was 17, wasn't he? Can you imagine Aaron having to be shipped off your brothers? They, they, they deny you and they try to kill you. You know the story. And then you're sent off to Egypt in such an ungodly nation. And there you're sold into the place. You're bought. You're sold into a place of pot. You don't know who these people are. And then you're only doing what you're supposed to do. Are you getting where I'm going to with this? And then yeah, he's saying only doing what he's supposed to do. And he's sent to the dungeon of being accused of bothering Potiphar's wife. And now he's in the prison. But aren't you glad that somebody even in the prison? He had done nothing wrong. He had done nothing wrong. But even in the prison, Brother John, everything he touched was blessed. Oh, they could have sit down and say, God's right there. God, why did you desert me? Why did you do me this way? What are you trying to do, Sister Blood? I'm trying to get you to understand. We gotta lay down insecurity. We gotta lay down all the painful circumstances and use them as an excuse on why we don't do what we need to do. And get up, church. Get up, get up. Get up, get up and let's be all that we can be for God. Oh Lord. Esther. What a lady. She didn't want to be where she was either. That's right. She didn't want to be where she was either. Aren't you, don't you appreciate when you read that Mordecai told her, since she did all that Mordecai told her, just like that she did when she was brought up underneath him, even though she's going to be queen. She trusted him. He had taken her in as his own. She does what she what he says, and he says, Esther, don't tell who you are. Don't let it be known that you're a Jew. You know, somehow God knows everything. He knew why Mordecai was supposed to tell her that. And so we find that Esther's in a rock and a hard place. Haman's got it in for Mordecai. He's plotting to kill the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Esther still hasn't told who she is. Oh, that's right. So Mordecai, he's just beside himself with the news that he's got that the Jews are going to be killed. And so Esther sends word to him and says, what's wrong? Sends him changed clothes, didn't she? Yeah. Sitting in sackcloth and yeah. what's going wrong? So he sends word back to Esther. And tells her what's going on. So Mordecai and her converse. And she lets it be known. If I haven't been called. She said I can't go in and speak to him. I can't do that because he's not called for me for 30 days. I could be killed. Yeah. Mordecai said Esther. You're not understanding what I'm telling you. 
Don't forget who you are. Amen. Don't forget who you are. And these famous words that we still look at and we still read as we read our text. Who knoweth that you come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esther said, okay, I'm going to lay all my insecurities aside. I'm going to lay aside all this unfavorable circumstances. I'm going to lay aside my fears. Yes. Yes. I'm going to lay aside. Oh, I was thinking today of the scripture. They love not their life even unto the death. They didn't love their life even unto death. They were willing to lay their life on the line. I said, God, Esther said, if I perish, I perish. And I'll go in. Y'all fast and I'm going to fast. And my maidens are fasting. I'll go in. Don't you know? And she walks in. And she sees the king hold out that scepter. Brother Bobby, don't you know the relief that must have come across that man? He says, at least I can talk to you. You understand how she was able to work it all and work all the devil's plans backfired. And the Jews are able to survive because one lady for such a, one young lady, I don't know how young she was, but just a young lady for such a time as she was in, decided, I will be what God wants me to be. Church, I feel like the Lord wants us to understand where we are. We're facing, unless the Lord comes back really soon, we're facing some dark times. And it may not be easy for us. I preached a message here a while back on, and because I asked the Lord when this stuff first started, I said, Lord, where do we fit in? What do we do? How are we going to do? We were shut. We had Sister Rita's surgery. She was, had surgery. was off the road for six weeks for her recovery. <laughs> When we left out, we was only gone five weeks, and then we turned around. We have to go back home when everything's shut down. We're, we're, uh, we're crying. We're, Lord, we don't think you're through with us. We don't think you're through. What do you want us to do? And we didn't understand what all the Lord was going to do through that time, but the Lord had a perfect plan. And so I, but I was asking the Lord during that, Lord, where do we fit in? What do we, what do, we do? And he said, occupy till I come. Right. Yeah. I never hadn't looked at the, the scripture. Y'all get ready to sing. I hadn't looked in the scripture. I hadn't looked at the parable for a long time. So I decided to look at it again. And the parable that Jesus said, Occupy till I come. He had delivered 10 pounds to 10 servants. Unlike the talents, they weren't divided out with so many. It was 10 pounds to 10 servants. And so everybody could take whatever. One, one had one pound, one had another, the other. We see some, we don't, we don't agree to where, where it was all dispersed. But what the Bible lets us know that during that time, while the nobleman was gone, the citizens hated the nobleman. And it made their trading so hard, Brother John. It was going to be so hard to be able to work under such conditions when the nobleman was so hated. So how can they gain more for the nobleman when the people that they were going to be dealing with hated the man? But he still said, occupy until I come. And so there's something stirred up within us. We begin to say, okay, Lord, help us to fit in your plan. The world is not going to want you. The world is going to become more anti-God all the time. Yeah, we've got ungodly and we've got godless that we see. That's, oh, God help us. They're going to hate the new woman. They're hating Jesus. The Antichrist spirit is very much alive. But that is no time. That is no time for us to sell. We will have some problems to deal with. Oh, we started doing things online. Brother John, we started doing some Saturday night services. And we started doing some devotion. Don't tell me if we've ever battled a devil. We battled the devil during that time. I'm telling the spirits of hell began to come against us. And, but during all that time, when it seemed like we were facing one thing after another, one thing after another, in that little pole barn where we were during those Saturday night services and during those little devotions that we were doing, the Holy Ghost would settle down upon us. The Holy Ghost would begin to feel the Holy Ghost and after we get through singing, we'd find one of them over one corner of the pole barn, somebody else on the other corner of the pole barn, and the Holy Ghost was ministering to us individually. We thought, well, you know, just a camera. We don't have anybody we're preaching to. We're preaching to a camera. But the same Holy Ghost said it on us before then. Stands up in a pole barn, which is all people. Hey, somebody gave their heart to the Lord in the altar service. Here's a 
in their in their in their home. He said, We've been getting up these individuals and we've been watching y'all Saturday nights. And I just wanted to tell you. So we have a 99-year-old lady in our church that has been raised Catholic all of her life. She's never had a personal relationship with Jesus. She's never been saved. He said, as all her gold was being given. He said, I looked over there at her and the tears is running down her face while we're watching this whole line. And said, so all of a sudden, she reached over and took my hand and said, would you pray with me? I want to find Jesus as my Savior. He said she left her way through the salvation right there. She got saved. We saw the man not long ago, Sister Stephanie, and he said she's still going on. He said she's still going on. circumstances she don't even her name isn't even called in the word of God but when her master name is got leprosy she rises to the occasion said oh, 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 oh the master could be back in my home country and know there's someone there that can make a difference in me she's the reason this little no-name lady is the reason and her master goes back to Elisha and leaves a well man. He said, he's, you say saved, I mean, it's before the redemption plan of salvation, but he acknowledges God to hold him. He said, now I know there is a God. Amen. There's no other God like God to hold. Can I tell us we might feel like we're little nobodies? And we're nothing we can offer every excuse in the book why we don't do what we need to do. Could we get such a fire with us? No, the power that you're never to come. We could get such a fire with us. Lord, I'm not trying to look at a away. Come on, that's right. making a trip on our trip back home. I said, Lord, you're not through with us. We don't know what we're going to do. The Lord is there letters that I can write. Can I write letters? Now, I'm not here to down any kind of, you know, and I'll just say it this way, and you know what I'm talking about. I, I assume there's one people that go door to door and knock in, always wanting to come in and show you a better way, they say. Did y'all get letters from them? In our part of the country, they couldn't go door to door knocking because of the COVID. But instead, Brother John, they sat down and they started writing letters and writing it all out and giving their plan in a form of letter, put, sending out, no telling how many letters we are. Somebody from Virginia, I think it was, said they've got letters as well. Our community. So, Lord, is there, is there some letters that we can write? Is there something that we can do? Can we do something? Lord, we're nothing, we're nobody, but surely. You know, the psalmist says, Lord, use me. Please don't refuse me. Surely there's something I can do. I trust that this message, and I feel like I've gone too long tonight, but can I encourage you? I feel like the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart to tell you God's got something that he's wanting to do. Lay aside these insecurity excuses, lay aside the unfavorable circumstances, lay aside all, lay aside, lay it all aside. And just say, Lord, throw a circle around yourself and say, Lord, it's just me and you. I'm going to rise to the occasion to be who you want me to be. I don't want to get out of doing something. I want to get here to do something. Lord, else you Would you stand with me tonight? <clears throat> we got room across the front where we can kind of space out if we need to space out and we're just a big family anyway aren't we? That's right. can we come can we come we say Lord 
I want to look at myself. I want to examine myself. Am I all you want me to be? Am I doing all that you want me to do? Lord, am I the one that you want me to be? And would, wouldn't we be honest between us and God tonight? Say, Lord, for such a time as this, I know you've called me. I know you've got something for me to do. So, Lord, can you help me that I can get up? And, Lord, that I can be about your business and more than, more than what I've ever done. Lord, that I can be doing more and not less. And that I can be more of who you want me to be. For such a time as this, I will rise to the occasion to be who you want me to be. Go ahead and sing, Sandy. Would you pour your heart out to the